Welcome back to Let's Get Cooking. Today we are making a sausage potato and kale soup. Mm, it's fall time going into the winter. It's time to make those hearty meals that are just stick to your bones and warm your insides. We'll be making soups, stews, chowders, anything that's just good for this type of season. So come on in the kitchen, get ready. Today's meal is sausage potato and kale soup and I'm sure it'll be something that you'll enjoy. Today's ingredients, kale, chicken broth, onion, celery, carrots, basil, garlic, cheese, gold potatoes, sausage, milk, butter, cream, sour cream, and some flour. Right here, we're just finely chopping the kale so we don't have big chunks in the soup, but small little bits. This kale has been washed a couple of times. I don't need to use a lot. We'll use about one or two cups of kale. Just give it a nice bite, nice crunchy texture, texture plus the health nutrition value that is added to the soup. You cannot go wrong when you're using eating any type of green, especially kale, collards, anything to that nature. So here's your chopped up kale that we'll be putting in our soup. Now that we have everything basically chopped up, we're going to get ready to go over to the Dutch oven and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is heat up our uh, Dutch oven, which is basically a big pot. If you don't have a Dutch oven, just a good, hearty, big pot will do because you're going to put quite a bit of liquid in it. So any kind of stew pot will work. Just add about two teaspoons of olive oil. I'm using actually, this is a sausage recipe, so you can use pork or turkey sausage. I'm using turkey Italian sausage, which is a little bit leaner, so therefore I'm adding a little bit of olive oil to the pot. Turkey on its own usually makes its own fat, oil produces its own fat. Once it's heated up, but just so it won't stick, make sure it won't stick, I just added a little olive oil. So now I'm adding our turkey sausage. And like I said, you can definitely use regular pork Italian sausage. And I'm using hot and mild. Recipe calls for just hot, but some, everybody doesn't like their dish is spicy, so I'm going to just combine both hot and mild sausage in my soup today. Whatever pleases you, feel free to use. And it's a pound, one pound of hot sausage and mild sausage, a combination of both. And we're going to let that just begin to cook and sear for a few minutes before we start stirring it. I'm breaking it up. Oil. 
we are browning the sausage for our soup. That's the first layer of flavor. Sausage is looking good. It's browning up real well, leaving all those good sausage flavors behind. And that's how, with the soup, you layer all your flavors. So we're starting off with the sausage, and then we're going to add the onions, the celery. It's going to come behind that, and the garlic. So we're laying, layering flavors upon flavors. Now we're going to take our sausage out. We're going to remove it from the pot and bring it back later to finish cooking. And once it's mostly brown, as is ours, we're about to remove it, sit it aside on a plate, and then add in our next ingredients, which is our celery, onion, carrots, and garlic. And we're going to saute those for a few minutes. Stay tuned. Okay, now that we've cleared the pot, uh-oh, before it starts to burn on us. We're adding our butter. We're going to add in a tablespoon of butter. And then we're going to saute. We're going to saute our, I think it's pronounced Maraqua. And the Maraqua is onions, celery, and carrots. They use it a lot in Louisiana cooking, Louisiana dishes. Generally starts with a miracle. So, like I said, we had to add another layer of oil because that lean turkey sausage didn't have a whole bunch of fat in it, which is one reason why I'm using it as a leaner alternative um, to the pork sausage. But I will eat either. Um, but it didn't leave a lot of fat. It did not leave a lot of fat behind. So, that's why we add our butter or olive oil. And then we begin to saute our veggies, our miracle. Onion, celery, carrots, and we're going to add some garlic. And we'll let those saute for about five minutes because they're nice and um, crunchy now. Okay, I just grated in my two cloves of garlic. This is why I always talk to you guys about that smell TV that we need. Because if you could just smell this, anything to me, butter and garlic associated, it's just a fabulous aroma. So now we have garlic, onions, carrots, celery. It's smelling up something good. And the dish is not even halfway done. But it's on its way to tasting flavorful and being aromatic. So our veggies are still sauteing. They'll be done in about a minute or so and we're going to continue to the next step. Okay, now we're going to add to our maraqua, to this mixture, we're going to add our potatoes. So let's just open up a little space. And these are Yukon Gold. I added about three cups of diced Yukon Gold potatoes. And we're going to add our basil. The recipe, called, the recipe calls for basil and parsley. But I'm not a big parsley person. So I didn't have it on hand. So I'm just going to omit it today. But by all means, if you have parsley and you love parsley, you can add your parsley and basil in at the same time. I'm using fresh basil, so I use about two tablespoons. You can use fresh or dry. If you use dry, you just add less. And I'm going to add some salt and pepper. Because this is such a big pot of soup, 
You can be liberal on your pepper and a little bit on your salt, depending on your sodium intake or the way you like things flavored. Not too much. You can always add, but you can never take away. So I'll always start on the lighter side. This is looking good right here. Now you see we have our potatoes, our basil, carrots, onion, celery, garlic. Mixing up. I always say they're becoming family. Up in the pot. We're going to add four cups of chicken stock. We are, not, we are now adding four cups of our chicken stock. to our mixture. There's one cup of chicken stock. Okay, our chicken stock has been added. We're going to stir that in. Now you see the soup coming together, right? Where you see the juice. It's like, okay, this is looking more like a soup. We're going to let this cook for 10 to 15 minutes. Let the potatoes begin to soften. And your, your fire is on a medium-high heat. Letting that cook 15 to 20 minutes. We're going to actually bring this to a boil. Once it starts boiling, we're going to reduce our heat to a low simmer. And then we're going to put a pot, put the top of the pot on it. So right now we're trying to get it up to that roll, rolling boil. Okay, we're back. Look at that rolling boil. Look at the boil. It has started. That took about five minutes before it came up to a boil. I'm going to turn my heat down to a low simmer, cover this up for about 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes, keep checking until your potatoes are fork tender. You don't want mashed potatoes. <laughs> so you still want some texture, just make sure they're fork tender where you can put a fork in it ever so slightly, but don't let them get too mushy. There's the top on the pot. Now that the top's on there, we're going to let it cook for about 10 or 15 minutes. Checking your potatoes because we, we want those fork tender. Okay, here we are after the simmering time, the 10 to 15 minutes simmer. This is what the soup is looking like thus far. Our potatoes are fork tender. So now I'm going to start on the rest of the recipe. So I'm getting another pot to make the roux. And that's the butter, the flour, cream combination. And then we're going to take that mixture and mix it into this soup. Alright, get ready y'all. So now we're about to make the roux. And the roux is the mixture that thickens and creams up our soup. So that's going to be our butter. We're going to do four tablespoons of butter. And we're going to let that start melting. And we're going to add in a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of flour. So this is a roux. When you make soup, some people make a roux to make macaroni and cheese. I don't do it that way. You make a roux, it's especially known for when you're making gumbo. You have to have that butter flour base. And that thickens up everything and brings a nice creamy consistency. 
Okay, you want to whisk together your butter and flour really well. And then we're going to go ahead and add in our three cups of milk. If you ever hear on any cooking channel, anybody talking about making a roux, that's all a roux is. It's equal parts butter and flour, and then usually some type of milk or water or um, chicken broth, beef broth, what, what have you. And basically, it's the basis of a gravy. When people make gravy, they start off by making a roux and adding the liquids to it. So we want And as it cooks for several minutes, it'll get thicker and thicker. And you have to whisk it so you don't have a bunch to make it smooth, so you don't have a bunch of flour, um, little thick flour pieces in there. And while we're waiting on our roux to thicken, I am going to drop the kale into our soup mixture and combine. So the kale needs to cook in there for about five or so minutes. And it'll continue to cook, wilt down. And because we cut it in small bite-sized pieces, it won't take long to cook and blend in with the rest of the flavors. So we just added our kale to our soup pot. Now our roux combination has thickened up. And now we're going to go ahead and add our cream. So once again, that's our butter, our flour, and our milk. And now we're adding in a half a cup of heavy cream. If you don't want to use heavy cream, you're welcome to use half and half. Now we're going to take our roux, our butter, flour, milk, cream mixture, and add it into our pot of soup. Okay, to our soup pot, we are adding our roux. That's our butter, flour, milk, and cream. Now look at how that changed. Look at that. That looks mm, that looks yummy. It looks creamy. It looks tasty, flavorful. All the vegetables. All the vegetables. We're almost done. Okay, let's welcome in our special ingredient. Don't know if you guys saw this coming, you may have forgotten. But to this wonderful pot of soup, already mixed with all these wonderful flavors, vegetables, potatoes, kale, carrots. Oh my goodness, look at it. We're going to go ahead and top it off with some flour. I mean, <laughs> we're going to top it off with cheese. Cheese, cheese, cheese. Cheese seems to make everything just a tad bit better. So we're going to mix in the cheese until it's melted. Probably about one or two minutes. Two cups of Kobe Jack or regular cheddar cheese. Shredded.
Okay, so let's talk about our soup. Let's talk about our layer of flavors. How do we start off? We started off browning our sausage, getting the flavors from our sausage, rendering the fat from the sausage. That was one layer of flavor. Then we mixed in our miracois, our vegetables, our onions, our celery, our carrots. We sauteed that with some garlic, another layer of flavor. Then we went from there, we added in the potatoes. The potatoes and the basil, another layer of flavor. We went from there, we cooked those together, added in our kale, chicken broth. Then we did our cream mixture. So flavors upon flavors are gonna make this soup just as tasty and hearty as it can possibly be. And what's still missing is the main ingredient and that is the sausage. Well, it could be the main ingredient, but I think it's a lot of main ingredients. But once we get this cheese and then our last flavor that we just added was our, com our melted cheese, our shredded cheese, which now easily melted in the pot. Look how pretty that is. Look how pretty. I know you want a cup right now. I know you want a bowl. I know you want a bowl. And from here, we're taking it up one more notch with some sour cream. Y'all, the recipe called for sour cream, so I'm just being obedient. Sour cream? Mmm, what's that gonna add? A nice burst of more creaminess and a little bit of tang. We added in a fourth cup of sour cream. Now we're going to take this and we're going to add a little bit more salt and pepper. Salt enhances the flavor, brings that flavor profile up, and then pepper it also just add another layer of peppery flavor. Not too much, just enough. It's a lot of natural flavors in this soup, and that's what, what makes it good, yummy, great. All the flavors. Now, this is looking nice. It's nice and thick. Has a nice semi-thick, not real thick. Not like a chowder. Still soupy. Still liquidy, but nice and creamy. I like creamy soups. Creamy soups tend to be a little bit more fattening, but they sure are good. So now I'm going to take our sausage that we browned from the beginning that has been waiting ever so patiently for its turn to get back in the pot. Jump back in the pot. Jump back in the pool. We're adding back in our sausage. And that's it. That is it. Mix that up. Stir and combine. Stir and combine. We did it. We did it. Let's get cooking. We made our sausage potato yeah. kale soup. It looks absolutely delicious. Can't wait to taste it. And I'm not a big taster. While I'm cooking, I always have to wait till everything is completely finished. I don't taste food. As much as I cook, I don't like the taste in the middle. I've learned how things look just by doing kind of how it's going to turn out. Mission accomplished. We tried a new recipe. We're going to rate this recipe. I'll rate it first. Let you make it and then... Put in your two cents, add your opinion. Um, it looks great. We made a sausage potato and kale soup today on Let's Get Cooking. Thank you for coming into the kitchen with me. This made a lot of soup. So we're looking at about eight to 10 servings. But the great thing about soups, chowder stews, the great thing about them is they freeze well. So. You can take whatever you need for now, freeze the rest, come back in a couple weeks, in another month, pull it out the freezer, and you have a whole meal. Yes. Thanks for cooking with me. It looks great. I'll let you know how it tastes. See you on the next one.